All right, all right, all right. So if you like the channel that is uplifting the name of Jesus Christ and it's also spreading the true gospel of Jesus Christ, by all means, click the subscribe button and also like, comment, and share. All right, so you already know what this is. But today I am going to do a rebuke. And this rebuke is for my Todd. And my Todd said something. And I'm going to tell y'all something. When someone show you who they really are, believe them. You have to believe them. You have to believe them. That's like someone shows you who they really are by their actions. Not just by what they say as well, but with their actions. Believe them. Believe them. Okay, don't try to repaint them or anything. No. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Move on. Time to move on. We can't hold on to everybody. So, yes. Um, my Todd said he did three hour sermons. He was so glad that he did three hour sermons. And he knew for a fact that the stuff that was coming out of his mouth was heresy. And instead of the people, you know, being bemused about it, they were amused. They laughed. They were sitting down. And I'm like, there is nothing funny about this. Heresy is what will send a lot of people to hell, to be honest. Because if you just, a lot of the times, Mike Todd never went along with the Bible. I'm going to be honest. When he does his teaching, he never goes along with the Bible. Because he never, he doesn't even like studying the Bible. He even said that. And I'm thinking to myself, what? How can you shepherd souls if you don't like studying the word? If you don't like studying the word, how in the world can you shepherd souls? We need we make it make sense. <laughs> but what really, and I mean what really, besides that statement, what really kind of you know, did something to me, you know, make me upset. It was the fact that he was talking about the Bible gives, well, let me put it like this. This is what he said. A lot of people are wanting something, but they're not acting out in obedience. They're not being obedient. They, they're they waiting on the Lord. They want something. And, okay, so I'm going to tell you something. I'd rather wait on the Lord and be obedient instead of demanding the Lord. But here's another thing. I would rather be obedient and not always expect something for be for being obedient. I'm going to tell you why. The Lord does not give you everything you want. That's how the God of the Bible is. I'm reading about my favorite um hero in the Bible, David. I got too many favorites, by the way. But do y'all remember David had told the Lord he wanted to build him that temple and the Lord denied it? I ain't going to lie. I cried right then and there when I first read that. I'm like, you denied him from building the temple, Lord? But the Lord had a good reason why. Because David was out there living a lifestyle of war in a way. He was out there just in the streets shedding blood with the sword. But even though that was on David's heart to build the temple, he said, Lord, I'm going to build a temple for you. I got, I got you. I'm going to build a house for you. The Lord said, no. He said, Solomon is going to do it. And Solomon did do it. So that goes to show, even though you have a desire for the Lord, he still he can still deny your request for anything. He can still deny and be like, nope. But you got to remember too, David also sinned. But what did David do? He repented. He didn't brag about the sin. He wasn't constantly living in that sin either. And you know, the Bible does say uh when we study it to show thyself as well, when we study the word. And it, it shows me that, you know, my Todd is one of them that does not want to study to show thyself. He just, you know, every time he does a sermon, he always say, I got a word from the Lord today. Okay. Cause the stuff that comes out of his mouth is already heretical. It's already 
false. How can it be a word from the Lord if he is not teaching sound doctrine? I don't care how true some of the stuff be that come out of his mouth. If it ain't sound doctrine, y'all need to run. Y'all need to flee because there's a lot of these so-called pastors that are leading these people astray. They're leading them from God instead of to God. And they're all on a free expressway to hell. And that's sad. That is so sad because how can you, this is why it's so important to have this. I don't care how many followers a person has. I don't care how big of a church, of a building or, you know, membership people got. I don't care if they're not teaching what they're supposed to teach. The true gospel of Jesus Christ, leave because the true gospel of Jesus Christ is about the repentance and remission of sin. Too many people in that church or so-called religious organization are still living in sin because they're too busy worrying about how they're going to get a business, how they are going, you know, how, you know, they focus more on blessings instead of repentance. God does not bless any mess. I want y'all to know that the Lord does not bless no mess. He doesn't. He does not bless any mess. I want y'all to remember that. But my time had the audacity to get on stage. And y'all know he always do these stupid props and everything just to keep people coming out there. But he was talking about, you know, how waiting on the Lord, you know, a lot of people waiting. But, you know, they're still moving out in obedience and still haven't gotten it. Well, guess what? God's timing ain't your timing. I can testify how many times I had to wait on the Lord. Let me tell y'all something. And I'm telling y'all two events. I was at my friend's wedding. And at first I was not going to go to the reception. And there's a reason why. I don't eat everybody cooking. But my mom's like, I want you to stay for this reception. Celebrate, you know, your friend and all that. I said, okay. So I did what my mom said. And, you know, the food was good and all that. I ain't going to lie. But... When it came time for the bouquet, one instead of when the bridesmaid catching it, because I wasn't in the wedding, I caught the bouquet. But here was the thing. That journey to become the wife that I am now, it took seven years. And I'm going to tell you why it took seven. Seven is God's number anyway. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I had to go through... Ignorant men, ignorant men, in order to find a man that's my, well, I wouldn't say find a man because I, I wasn't out there searching. I was not out there searching, but anyway, in order for the right man to show up. See what I'm saying? So, granted, I was engaged before, and then... Got engaged again. I'm glad those two weren't even the one. <sighs> Here comes my husband. Years later. During COVID. And you know, God's way of blessing you ain't gonna be the way that you look at it. I'ma tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all another um example of this. You remember when Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, he talks about the Messiah coming down and everybody got all happy and whatnot. They thought, oh, we finally going to get a king up in here. So when Jesus comes down, they look at Jesus like, who oh, that person is? That can't be who we think. We Hold up. That can't be the king. He ain't on no horse. He ain't dressed death down or anything. Who is this man? It was the same way. When I got my husband, I'm telling you why. I wasn't looking at looks when it came down to my husband, but I was looking at the actions. And like I tell people, my husband was everything I prayed for because I wanted him to be very different from the other men that I dated and the one that I wanted to marry. I literally, I'm not lying to y'all when I say this, I literally started questioning God. I'm like, God. This can't be him. Or is it him? I said, because he's doing everything that I wanted someone else to do. And some 
about this whole thing, right? But you know what? God never fails. I'm not going to lie. God never fails. And I was like, that's him. That's him. That's him. And like I tell people, my husband is my cover. And my husband, you know, it's the greatest thing ever. The greatest blessing I ever had, to be honest. But I didn't get married right away. See what I'm saying? Everybody's love journey is love journey to the altar is different. Very different. And besides, when I became engaged, I didn't make the announcement on Facebook, no Twitter, no um TikTok, Instagram, what which I had all four at the time. I only got three. I didn't. You know what I did? I only told my mom and my sister. That was the only two I told. And then on top of that, I um what else I do? I just separated myself from everyone that night. We had um, driver's training. I separated myself from everyone that night. And I just went to the Father. I said, Lord, prep me to be the wife that you call me to be. A lot of times when God bless you with what you ha- or what you pray for, you can't go on social media or anything like that. And just start making announcements and everything. Or you just can't really just tell people. Because I didn't tell my soldiers until three months later. And then I didn't tell my bestie until three months later, too. But the crew, the crew at home, they found out on the wedding day I became a wife. So, yeah. <laughs> now everyone needs to know at that time. But you see what I'm saying. But granted, I had to prep for this. Because not only was I praying to become a wife, I had to pray how to be a wife. The, the wife God had called me to be. See what I'm saying? Like we can't just be out here bragging and showing. A lot of times, the reason why God don't bless us with the things that we really want, because a lot of times we are going and He knows how we are. God is smart. He's very smart. He's very strategic. A lot of times we want to get on these platforms or just get out and be like, y'all know what I got. Mm-hmm. Such and such said I ain't gonna be this. Such and such said I ain't gonna be that. This is why it's so. So, so, so important not to listen to prosperity gospel because it teaches you to take from God instead of submitting yourselves as a living sacrifice. And you have to realize when you submit yourself unto the Lord, you ain't going to get everything you want. Before my husband, there was somebody else I wanted. Someone else I wanted to be my husband and everything. God was like, no. God already knew what was going to happen if I married this person. God knew about the heartache. He knew about the pain. He probably, matter of fact, no problem. He would know what that life will be like for me. I need peace. He knows that. <laughs> I don't have time waking up in the middle of the night wondering if somebody's going to come home. And I'm going to tell you what, what I mean. Uh-uh. I didn't need the street life. That was the thing. I did not need someone that was in the street life. Someone heavy in the streets because that's no way to live. And innocent people, they get hurt 10 times more than the person that's running the streets. So God did not need his own daughter to be in danger. But I'm going to use another um, example. Now, my plan, yeah, I know I'm in the military. So, this is job number one. But anyway, when after I graduated the top of my class for BLC, I graduated with honors. And here was the thing about that. I was still working on getting the points and everything. Still working, getting points. Still working, getting the points. Still working, getting the points. I didn't get the rank of sergeant. Until after I lost my best friend. And I wasn't even happy when I made Sergeant. I'm just going to be honest. I was so bitter. I was so bitter. I wasn't mad at God or anything. But I was just bitter. I was like, Lord, I, I just can't. I'm not celebrating. I said, I can't do this. I said, I lost my friend. I said, he was my main supporter. But. Eventually, you know. It took a while to grow into it, but here's the thing. It took nine months, nine months in order for me to become an NCO. Just because I graduated top, that did not mean it was a guaranteed job. No, 
everyone else that didn't graduate at the top, they made it before me. I'm like, what we do this at? And I'm looking at the Lord like, how long? Because here's the thing. This is how you, you know when you really say yes to the Lord. You go through the fire. I was going through fire. I was going through everything. When you really about this life, you're going to go through some things. You can't really. Look, I don't even think my God went through anything to be speaking. Now, I've been through stuff from my past, from a child, from when I was a child, all the way to being 21. I would say that because 21 was rough for me. That was the time when I really think, when I really thought that I couldn't be used by the Lord after that mistake I made. But. Yeah, but I, like I said, I, I'm just going to keep it real when I say this. If you haven't been through anything, why are you speaking? Why are you in the pulpit? What can you tell somebody that, you know, hasn't been, that has been somewhere you haven't, what I'm trying to say? That's the thing, because I don't even think he's been anywhere. I don't think he's gone through the fire or anything. I'm just keeping it real because everything that comes out of Mike talks about is about a business, all this other stuff, bread in his pocket. Like, nobody want to hear that. We got souls to worry about. Souls are on the line. I'm going to say it again. Souls are on the line. <coughs> souls are. Not about money. It's not about a bit. So with this prop that he did, he was talking about if you really want the Lord to bless you, give. Okay. Bible does say this. Give, but don't but give without expecting anything in return. I do this a lot, and I'm not gonna tell y'all who I give to, but I do this a lot. That's why when people try to give me something, I'll be like, nope, nope, I'd be running and dodging for that. But um, what am I about to say? He gets on stage, my Todd gets on stage, and he takes off his shoes. I think they were some Jordans, whatever. And he asks somebody, Do you got a size 13? Who wears size 13? So he gives it to a young man, and this young man does wear size 13, gives them the Jordan, and then. <sighs> It's on stage with his socks on and all the other clothing. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. But my point of the matter is this. Give without expecting anything in return. Because you know what? That's how, it shows how content you are. It shows how content you can become. I can be a blessing to someone without even expecting anything else in return. I care more about the people's souls than I do about money back. Than I do about... um. Just anything to be honest, but I'm just keeping it real because I don't know what goes on in my Todd's head. He does not have the Bible when he's on the stage, and yes, I'm gonna call it a stage, and there's a reason why I'm calling it a stage. I don't see it as a pulpit. He's on the stage just acting up, he's giving a show every week just to have the same people come back. You can't, let me tell you something. And, you know, there's a lot of things, I'm going to be honest. I've been away for a minute. I've been in the mountains. And um, I've been in warfare. And daily, I have to remind myself that although I'm, you know, a Christian author as well, I was not called to be an influencer. So I'm still finding that desire. I'm still finding the desire each and every day. Because it is a desire. You know, I see myself as an influencer, but I'm not. And I'm like, no. As I was called for something else, I'm like, you won't have to go. And, you know, because a lot of these influencers, they get paid. And I was like, well, Lord, I don't want to get paid for, you know, what I love, you know, writing about. Because, you know, I love, you know, showing off the, you know, People in the community that I do um, write about, because it's still, um, I call it loving months. June is loving months, but um, yes. But 
only between man and woman, if y'all know what that means, okay? And that's why God's design. So, yes, I still show God's design of love and marriage and all that. Even on the page and all that because I still write about it. But, you know, I'm saying, Lord, I'm going to have to repent right here because, you know what? I feel like, in a way, I have a desire to be an influencer. I can't do this. I wasn't called for that. I, I ain't trying to be popular or anything. I said, you didn't even call me for that. Let me tell y'all something. Being popular comes with a price. And my Todd, along with William Murphy, Pastor, um, well, I ain't going to call him Pastor, but anyway, Keon Henderson and all the other false teachers that people love and adore and idolize, they their price was, was this and simple, not to tell y'all the truth. I'd rather tell y'all the truth, lose people, and still, you know, do what the Lord has called me to do. I have lost friends along the way. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Because when you stand for something, you you stand for it. When you stand for the truth, you better stand on it. Because guess what? Not everybody and their grandma want to hear the truth. They will try to persuade you to listen and do other things. You can't hearken unto the voice of the wrong person. Y'all better start hearkening on to the Lord. Y'all better start fearing the Lord and the Lord only. Last night I was reading 1 Samuel 15 and I had to read the passage over again because Saul talking about um, he was fearing the people, which I'm like, boy, let me go back. So I went to the first verse in 1 Samuel 15. Y'all know what that passage is about. It's about Saul being very disobedient to the Lord. Samuel gave so, well, the Lord actually gave it to Samuel first because, you know, Samuel was the prophet. And he said, look, tell Saul he need to do this. Saul needs to um go. They about to go to war with the Amalekites. Tell him don't spare nobody. Don't spare no animals. Nothing. Go in there. Wipe it all out. And what happened? Saul decides to kill everything but the good sheep, the good oxen. And talking about, well, we was going to sacrifice them to the Lord and even spared the king of Agag. Guess who had to kill the king himself? Samuel did. Now, Samuel was old. Samuel to the, uh, to the sword, like, I'm going to do it myself. And he did. He killed, he killed the king. I'm like, Samuel was a built different prophet then. Gone, Samuel. But my point of the matter is this. Samuel had to rebuke Saul. He had to. And then what happened for, and then Saul came up talking about, well, we feared the people. Well, I feared the people. And I had to come back. I'm like, where in the world did he fear the people at? Where? Where, where, and where? I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm just saying. I'm like, Saul should have even told the people because to me, when he was in war and all that, I don't know if he was like captain or whatnot, but he's like, look, y'all, the Lord gave a simple instruction. We go in there, we wipe the Amalekites out. We even take over the king's head and everything. Let's go wipe everything out. Don't don't spare nothing. Don't spare nobody. Let's do it. But no, Saul, I believe Saul had everything already planned out. Like, look, I, well, if I see something good, like a good old ox and everything, we're going to take it back. We're going to kill it everything but guess what he already had sheep and um ox to kill back at the place that he was at so he could have did all that back at home as soon as he got home because he already had it but he wanted something else and the fact that he spared the king let me tell you guys something a lot of these political leaders they can contribute on to sin because the king of the Amalekites was the one that started the people to sin. He he encouraged them to sin. He didn't. Uh -uh. He looked at his position like, um, you know what? I'm king. I don't mind what the people do. As long as they don't try to, you know, anything. But, you know, the people's doing whatever. And the king was not, you know, holding it down like he needed to. Because he was the one that was starting to, he was even being sinful too. No matter your position, no matter what God gives you, your position, make sure you're truly following the Lord. 
Make sure you're truly seeking the Lord. This is why each and every day when I, you know, the Lord wakes me up, I have to do my best to be godly on my job. And I'm going to tell you why. The, the, the soldiers, they need guidance. That's one thing. The soldiers, they need guidance. And I always tell them, I said, you, y'all need to be thankful. Y'all don't have, y'all have an NCO that does not curse. I've, and that's another thing. I've gone through the ranks, and every time I get an NCO or under somebody's leadership, they are cursing. They're using profanity, and I'm like, can y'all come up with another word? Sometimes I have to give them a look like, y'all know who y'all standing in front of, right? I mean, my new boss, man, he he say everything but the right thing, but you know what? I'm going to be honest. I have no heaven or hell to put nobody in their grandma in. The only thing I got to just still shine my light. Still reading the word on the job. Because I definitely was reading it while I was in the mountains. No lie. And I was reading it out there while I was in the mountains. I even had a minister of one of my soldiers. He was sick. It was scary. It, it was so scary. He had a heat exhaustion. I'm about to go check on the other young man. He done um, slit his finger out there. Yep. Oof. Oh my goodness. It was a whole, whole bunch of mess going on. But my soldier asked me while we were on the way to the hospital. He said, Do y'all believe Jesus is God? And I said, Yes. I said, he said, How y'all know this? I said, John 1 1. I started going strictly in the ministry, I mean, ministering to the child. I waited like, and I was out there for a long time. I didn't get back to the field until like midnight. But that's how tired I was. But you know what? If there's one thing I would do, I will minister to the soldiers as much as I can. And that's how I know the Lord was there as well. One thing I will say, I don't take this for granted. This is one thing I don't do. I do not take something like this for granted because souls are on the line. And the way the boy sounded and looked like, woo, woo, y'all. That's all I'm going to say. Just woof. But for him to ask me that, I thought, let me go straight into it. Me and my brother in Christ, we were both just, you know, giving it to him. But I had to keep my eye on him, though, too, because it was a scary situation. Very, very scary. But, you know, I, I just thank the Lord for bringing us there, bringing us back. We had um we had three days this week, so I ain't going to work yesterday. But next week is a four day and it's going to be tough because the day I don't celebrate paganism. I'm just letting y'all know July 5th will be five years that my angel passed away. My friend that I told y'all about. And um, I'm going to say also the book I'm working on. I'm working on two books. I'm giving him a a clean exit. That's all I'm going to say. I'm giving him a clean exit. That's all y'all need to know. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I'm so glad I read that last night. But, yeah. But anyway. The Lord wants me to let go. That's all I'm going to say. The Lord just wants me to let go. I'm going to let go. I got to let go. I have to. I just can't keep holding on, you know, just keep holding on. But, yeah. But anyway, let's get back. So, again. What my thought even did, I just, what my thought also did on stage after he gave the shoe to the young fella and everything, y'all, he, I don't know if he realized that he just gave in front of everybody. I like giving in private. Because a lot of times, oh, even the Bible talks about when you give to somebody, make sure you don't televise it, like showcase it out, what I'm trying to say. Because apparently everybody and their grandma saw that he gave the size 13 Jordans to the young man. And when I say 
And I mean, when I say I'm just going to be honest. When I say, I don't know where else Mike Todd has planned up his sleeves or anything, but I'm going to be honest. A lot of things that he does and say, it's very contrary to the word of God because it's not it's not going to convict anybody. Like I said, when he said that a lot of things that he said, he knows for a fact. Like, he admits it and knows that it's heresy. Instead of somebody saying that you ought to be ashamed of yourself, get down from there. The people were laughing. There is nothing funny about playing with God's sheep. God still does not play. I'm going to say this one more time. God does not play. When it comes down to anyone manipulating the sheep, um, robbing from them, pimping them, because guess what? A lot of things go on in these churches, these so-called churches, that are very unpleasing to, to the Lord. Very unpleasing. So, my Todd, please sit down. Just please sit down. I'm not saying this to be mean or anything, but it, it's being real. Because you know for a fact what's coming out your mouth, yet, yet, you refuse to study. You refuse to study the word. You refuse to sit in the presence of the Lord. Because to me, when you study the word, you're sitting in his presence. You're supposed to be getting taught by the Holy Spirit. And you even show me that you're not even being operated by the Holy Spirit. Because if you were being operated by the Holy Spirit... You will be saying sound, true doctrine instead of all this foolishness that is coming out of your mouth. And you already told the people that the stuff that comes out of your mouth is heresy. And you're still enticing them with words that are what their tickling ears want to hear. What one of you, because you won't have so much blood on your hands. So much blood on your hands. You need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent before it is too late. You need to repent. Because a real shepherd, a real shepherd, a real pastor that is shepherding souls, they will have the word of God on stage. They will not have their iPad. That is what's wrong with people today. They depending on technology instead of the word of the living God. This Bible can transform my life better than anything or oh, come on now. But anyway, than anything else that I've tried before, to be honest. I was searching all the wrong places. But guess what? Eventually I surrendered. I came to Christ. And the moment I came to Christ and all that, the moment I started getting into my word, I started reading more. I started studying more. And the Lord just started revealing, revealing revelation. How can you have the title pastor if you don't want to study, if you don't want to be in the presence of the Lord? Because a real one will study. A real one. A real one will stick no matter how they feel. You're going to have so much blood on your hands. Teaching teaching people about businesses. And another thing, I would rather wait on the Lord than to go out there and get something myself that I know that was probably not in the Lord's plan for me to have in the first place. Because the, Bible that says, because the Bible says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I would rather wait on the Lord. Because when you wait on the Lord, it produces patience and also long suffering. But also, you have to suffer in this. That's the thing, though, too. You don't want to suffer. You don't want to suffer. And I'm not talking about suffering by waiting on the things. You don't want to suffer for Christ. Christ did not come down 
to give us a peace, a peaceable life here on earth, like 10 toes up and all that. No, I got to be 10 toes standing down fighting each and every day. There's nothing peaches and cream about being a Christian, about being a disciple of the Lord. No. Fasting is important. Reading the word is important. Being in the mountains is important. It's essential and it's important. Dying to your flesh. That's another thing. A lot of people don't want to die to their flesh. You're not even teaching on that. Because a lot of people are probably still sinning. And you just don't know. Because you know what? You're not even talking about sin. In your sermons. You over there just acting up. Showing out. We don't do that. We do not do that. All these props that you do. What good, what's the good of them? You just entertain it. You're just putting on a Sunday circus show act. You're just putting on a Sunday circus show act. And that's the wrong thing to do. There are people hungry for the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And they don't want props. They want the true word that is unadulterated. Because right now you adulterating the word. You're coming up with a whole nother gospel. And I am in the book of Galatians where it says, anybody preach another gospel to you, let them be accursed. Right now you are cursed. You preach a heresy. You leading souls to destruction. You need to repent. You need to repent because guess what? All this not studying wouldn't read the word. Let me tell you something. True disciples, they got to study. True disciples, they don't do props. They get straight to business. Straight to business. When it comes down to teaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You know how to trampoline in there? You know, vandalize the Bible? What else you did? You spit in somebody's face trying to show them how Jesus, um, oh, honey. And then you had the audacity to have semen and all on your face. Like, disgusting. Very, very, very disgusting. There are people probably um, struggling with lust. There's too many babies in Christ that are hunger. They're still sucking on milk. It's time for them to get some meat. Milk can only be to a person for a certain, well, really for a baby for a while. But babies, they need some meat. And sanctification is a process. It is a process. It's a process. It's not, it just don't happen overnight. It's a process. A process. And I thought, you gonna have to get it together because <sighs> you're doing too much. Well, you've been doing too much. And you just admit it that the stuff that comes out of your mouth is heresy and you know it. That's nothing to laugh about. That is nothing to laugh about. You need to repent. You need to really repent. And it shows. 
It really shows. It shows. It shows. So I wasn't, you know, I already told the Lord, I said I was going to make this video. And because, you know, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And there are times I just can't hop on when I really want to hop on. Sometimes I just still need to be, you know, in the presence of the Lord and get the go. But at the end of the day, like I said, I care about souls more than I care about money or anything else. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, and I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. If your pastor is not teaching from the Bible, and what they're saying is not lining up with the word of God. It's time to run. It is time to run. Judgment is going to fall upon the churches in America. I will say that. Judges, judgment is going to fall on these churches in America. Because not everybody is teaching sound doctrine. And it's sad. It is very sad. Very, 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 very sad. And a lot of people are dependent more on the pastor than they are the worker. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what your pastor said. I don't care how enticing it sounds. I don't care how good it sounds. Sound. You need to read the word for yourself. Because a lot of these pastors, they're not operating in the Holy Spirit. Which is the true spirit. It's time to choose this day whom ye shall serve. And I don't care how popular they may seem, how fun and all that. Matter of fact, teaching the word of God, it ain't supposed to be fun. i mm, tell you why it's not supposed to be fun. You up there, you're preaching the true gospel. People are not going to want to hear the true gospel. Some do. Well, I don't believe it like this. I guess many people might, but you got some that will try to argue down because they want the Bible to justify their sin. To justify their sin. God is not going to rewrite his holy word just to justify your sin. And I'm like this. It's time to worship biblical Jesus. It's, try, it's time to submit to biblical Jesus. Because this other Jesus that y'all created, one that tolerates sin. Oh, y'all in hot water. Because I'm going to tell you something. If biblical Jesus tolerated sin, there wouldn't have been no need for him to die on Calvary. Because guess what? He was taking our place. We was already sinners. Before we got into this world, and even when we got into this world, he was already sinner. So he already he already did the ultimate sacrifice. He did the ultimate sacrifice because he did not want any of us to burn for all eternal damnation. But people are still refusing biblical Jesus. They don't want to give up the lifestyle. They don't want to give up the weed. They don't want to give up the alcohol. They don't want to give up, you know, popping pills. They don't want to give up sleeping around. They don't want to give up prostitution. They don't want to give up um, pornography. They don't want to give up being, you know, mad all the time, being revilers. They don't want to give up the gossip. They don't want to give up the slandering. They don't want to give up the idols. How can you follow Jesus if you're still holding on to baggage that you need to get rid of? Because you can't have your cake and eat it too. I mean, you can't get rid you can't get rid of it on your own. Come to Jesus. 
But you have to be consistent. That's the thing. And there's one thing that kept me consistent in this walk um, from 2020 till now. It will be following Jesus. That's the only thing I stay consistent with. Besides my right. But I'm telling y'all something. Because I tried other things before. I'm not going to lie. Other hobbies and all that. I tried other things. But I'm like this. I would rather be consistent. When it comes down to my faith, I'd rather still be hungry, be thirsty for Christ. Why? Because it's time for the truth. Too many people, too many false prophets have gone out here. They've gone out into the world. And, and there's a great follow-away too. A great follow-away. Great follow-away. People don't want to, you know, that's going to happen too. People falling away from the truth instead of going to where their itching ears are going. I can't tell y'all how many times I've seen people post up the churches they be in, and the pastor is speaking a whole another pro, um, a whole another gospel. And I look at everybody that's in there just sitting there. I'm like, this man don't have so much blood on his hand. So much blood on his hand. So much blood. So much blood. People need to start testing the spirits. That's the thing. People don't want to test spirits. I don't care how uh, I don't care what that person say. If they not being operated by the Holy Spirit leave. Okay? Leave. Because the Bible does say this. If they don't teach that Jesus Christ came into the came in the flesh that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the thing. A lot of, of them don't even teach on Jesus. Don't teach on Jesus. I'm trying to speak, Lord. Please help your daughter. But I'm just keeping it real. I don't care how fun the church might, the the organization might seem or be. I, I don't care. But what I will say is this. Be be sober-minded in the season. Be sober-minded. Be alert. Have discernment. Have discernment. It's time to have some discernment because not everybody's who or what they say they are, okay? Have discernment. Have discernment. Have discernment. So... I made this video for y'all. Well, not for y'all, but I made this video. And I'm going to go deeper into it because a lot of y'all's faves, they're showing y'all who they are. And a lot of y'all probably can't even see it because you still got scales on your eyes. I'm just going to be, I'm not going to sugarcoat. That's one thing I'm not going to do is sugarcoat. Uh-uh. Quit idolizing people. Quit idolizing people. Idolaters do not inherit the kingdom. Quit idolizing people. But what I will say is this is where it's time to choose this day whom ye shall serve. It's time to choose. It is time to choose this day whom ye shall serve. And Mike Todd, if you do not repent, you will be in hell uplifting up your eyes. It's sad. Very, very sad. You have people laughing at you when you said, this, I know the stuff that comes out of my mouth is heretical. You should say it's not funny. It's not funny. 
Because it's not funny. It's sad. All together, it's sad. It's very, very, very sad. Oops. It's sad. And I mean sad with a capital S because nothing that you say is entertaining. Nothing that you say even convince my soul. But what you say makes me look at you sideways. Like, what does this got to do with the word? Shame on you. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. Repent before it is too late. You need to repent. You need to repent before it is too late. Too many of those people are still probably struggling with sin. You don't know it because you refuse to read the word. You refuse to study the word. How can you shepherd souls, lead souls to Christ if you don't want to study? Because I'm telling you something, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. The best teacher. And I've learned more. I've learned more. I ain't gonna lie. I've learned more. From the Holy Spirit than I have any of these pastors. Or people that just want a title. Because I'm like this. <sighs> Growing up in these religious organizations. I'm just gonna keep it real. I just wanted Jesus. I got him now. And can't nobody take him away from me. You see what I'm saying? Can't nobody take... Mm -mm. Nope. They can take my love from, uh, of Jesus from me. They can't do that. Mm -mm. But you know, loving him ain't... You know, it's not enough. I have to really live out this thing. I was told from a child, the only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. But I knew there was more. So as I got up older, I'm like, and you know what? I'm just going to be honest and keep it real. And I'm going to say this, though, too. After I looked at an interview that Tupac did, and no, y'all, I don't listen to Tupac music like I used to. Mm -mm. Them days over with. That's one thing the Lord really had to work on me with. Not, I know there's a lot of people that be like, okay, I'm between Proverbs 31 and Cardi B. I was the girl that was between Proverbs 31 and Tupac. So I had to choose. That was lukewarm right there. So I had to choose. I said, I'm going to choose Proverbs 31. I ain't got time acting like I'm Tupac, y'all. Uh -uh. Nope, 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 and nope. Point is this. Tupac did an interview, and he was talking about he believed in God. But, you know, I was like, granted, you believe in God. But my thing is this. You're not using your music to glorify God. You're not. Mm -mm, you uh, Oh, the stuff that was his lifestyle. Let me tell you all something. You can't. Even idolize, you can't even idolize these celebrities, can't even look up to these celebrities. I'm gonna be honest. Granted, some of his, I don't even write about you know, thugs and all that like I used to, like I desired to at one point, but I said no. But there's one story, one song that he made, and it gave me inspiration for a book. I'm not gonna say which one because I haven't even written it yet, to be honest. And I plan on writing it, but it's not going to take place in the hood, if you understand. But, yeah. And it's just a simple song. But, like I said, I'm, I ain't going to write it. I, I'm just not going to write it. Uh -uh. Nope, 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 nope. But, anyway, enough about that. My point is, oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, oh, I know what I was going to say. It takes more than just believing in God. You really have to live this lifestyle. Faith without works is dead, okay? You really have to put out some work. I ain't talking about sacrificing the lambs and all that. I ain't talking about sacrificing animals or anything like that. No, I'm talking about you have to constantly be praying. You have to constantly be seeking his face. You have to constantly be denying your flesh. You have to constantly be um, loving others. 
loving the Lord God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. You got to, let me tell you guys something. This should be our wake up routine every day if you're really about this life. Because I have to deny my flesh every day. Every day. That's stuff I want. I'd be like, no. Stuff I desire, nope. But you know what? I'm going to be honest. That's going to be another topic that I'm going to really um minister to y'all on about denying yourself. Because a lot of people, I don't think they really truly know what it means to deny yourself. Like, even when I write my books, I do not still wanting, you know, a lot. But, you know, I gave up the New York Times bestseller titles, all that stuff. Like, the bestseller titles, I really gave those up. The only thing, my books in the top 100, only on Amazon for, like, the Christian and all that every now and then. But, you know, I'm still thankful for that. Because it comes with a price. It comes with a price to have being popular. I ain't popular, okay? And I'm okay with that. And, you know, I'm already controversy in the industry because I'm controversy to the people because I stand on the true word, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I ain't sugarcoating nothing. And it's always fellow authors that, you know, that don't write the genre that I write, but they want to be like, why are you doing this? Why are you saying that? Like, Bye, block. I ain't got to. I don't argue, but my block game's strong. So, yeah. They'll understand when. They, well, even if they don't understand. That's all I'm going to say. Even if they don't understand, then that's on them, okay? But, you know, not everybody's supposed to understand your calling. And that's okay, all right? So, if you or someone you know that does not have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, do it now while you have the chance. Do not wait until tomorrow. Do not wait until next week. Do not wait until next year. All right? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Do it now. Do it now. Okay? So, may God continue to keep you all. May he bless you all. Be blessed.